Good morning and one today is Saturday, December 18th, 2021. This is Coffee and Crypto, or shit on Shitcoin Saturday as we sometimes call it. Hey, not a whole lot has changed. I left these in from last week. A couple things I want to emphasize in here. We are in a bear market in crypto. I don't know if I've said that, but it'll be pretty obvious to you when you pay attention to the 30-day EMA, which has become one of my favorites, sort of reference points as of late it's not necessarily indicated but it's a reference point and that'll make more sense as we go through a few of these things and if not watch recent videos or watch as many weekend charts as you can stand and also my trading simplified show to learn a lot more about that when you are in a bear market you want to pick your spots carefully i have bought a few relative strength breakouts as of late but for the most part i've been focusing mostly on the core methodology and that'll all be fleshed out over the next few minutes to short or not to short I'm not a huge fan of shorting, but I will short equities, as many of you know. If you look at the Trading Service Archives, www.davelander.com slash trading, no, slash archives, you'll see that we do short, especially when the market begins to roll over in earnest. The problem with the short side is technically your gains are, are limited and your losses are unlimited, but obviously strong money management can help there the reason i'm not a huge fan of crypto just yet is because the market is so inefficient some of these things can go up 100 percent or 200 percent or more and you really don't want to be caught short those pairs doesn't mean that i haven't shorted doesn't mean that i won't short in the future i just think it's a little bit more dangerous and i was tempted to short one actually right before i went live here but i'm kind of sitting on my hands there for a while until i can kind of really wrap my head around the, the true risk involved with shorting anyway before i just pontificate too much let's just take a look at a couple of things in here as i've been saying quite a bit ethereum and possibly or i should say ethereum and bitcoin or your possible bellwethers is what i'm trying to say in here and in general if they're below the 30 ema especially if you have landry light meaning that the highs are less than the ema look how much landry light we've had in here for quite some time then you want to be very picky at buying the other alt coins in here. And Ethereum is also a pretty good bell weather. This is my color scheme. Just so you know what my thinking is. So blue is, is either something I'm thinking about trading or at least was. And I left some older ones in here to show you. Green is very possible. Purple is something that I have opened up and I have an IPT. And a stop in place. Cyan has hit the IPT. I'm free rolling on that, meaning that my profit target has been hit. It's a free position, so to speak. And the goal is to hang on as long as possible. Just like the core methodology. Red means I have a stop in place. Maybe I hit the IPT and then there's just a stop on, on some leftover shares or something. If it's maybe have come back down and I'm getting ready to get stopped out on that. Pink, or in some cases, sometimes it won't hit the IPT. It might have stopped me on half, and then I've got to bail out on the remaining shares. And then pink means it's some sort of action that needs to be taken. So with that said, I, I left a couple of them here. Like this one, I just went after for S&Gs. It just was going up. I was doing my scan right before I went live here, and it looked like it was going up. I've got a really tight stop in place on this. I just want to see if it's if I catch that early breakout. I, I was a little hesitant to show you this because... It doesn't really fit any methodology in general. Now, if we were blowing and going in here and this thing was up really strongly, then I would consider it, as I'll show you a couple in one second. AVAX was a 230 EMA breakout. I am a little bit of a bull on this one, and it can trend really nicely when it does. So you can see bar one, low below the, low. I'm sorry, low above the 30 EMA. That's one bar of Landry Light, bar two, low above the 30 EMA, okay? And then you would enter above the two bar high. As you can see, I kind of front ran that a little bit because it's just beginning to trigger as we speak. On the downside, you can see bar one, bar two, the entry would have been here, and it just kind of barely triggered in that case. I do recommend you do give these things a little bit of wiggle room on the entry. Back here, for instance, bar one, bar two, so entry would have been somewhere in here, and everything works better with trends. So if you have a nice little breakout system like a 230 EMA breakout system, It'll work beautifully when, of course, the market trends. So the blues, you can see things that I was looking at, or at least were looking at. This one looks like it's kind of thin. I have traded it before, but it's pretty thin, so I'll probably take that one off. You can see this was just going straight down, so I'll just unflag that. It's no longer interesting. The COV was one I actually played and got stopped out of. I don't think I hit the IPT 
on this one, and this is one that was about right here, break it out during one of my presentations, doing a week of charts to think, and I didn't take the setup, and a little, uh, I did get in late on that one. I think I don't think I made money on that one. Bitcoin, obviously, still in the downtrend, and that's the other thing, too, as you go through the Shiba, I like to keep an eye on just for S&Gs. Certainly don't want to buy that, and as you go through these, or as I go through these, I should say, notice that a lot of them are well below their 30 EMA, and here's one. Let's pull back in here. It's a little unorthodox, but sometimes when they're new or new to an exchange, they can really go like it did back here. AXC, I'm long. I've been long this one for a while. I don't think I hit the IPT just yet. In fact, I know I have it because it would be cyan in here. But you can see it's been trending nicely. It can be a little thin, as you can see, based on the tails. But so far, so good. Nice little trend higher on that one. XCC, another one that I am long. So there are a few that I'm long in spite of the bear market. Maybe I'm just hopeful or into wishing, <laughs> as I often say, borrowing a line from Sakoda. I thought I would do a webinar without saying that, or, or a presentation, I should say. Anyway, this would uh, pull back to the EMA. Not the most beautiful setup in the world, but it is moving nicely out of the pullback so far. Knock on wood. And another one took off, pulling back a little bit in here. Luna, as you can see, nice little pullback to the EMA. Now, one thing I wanted to mention to you, notice this big old spike in here. When I was first trading crypto with a very, very small account, and it's still small, I'm, it's still nickels and dimes. When it was really, really small, I actually didn't run stops overnight because of this action here. But keep in mind that once your account begins to grow a little bit, you definitely have to use stops and proper money management. So on something like this, I'm pretty sure I got stopped out on that particular day. In fact, I know for a fact that I did. I was long on the breakout. I had taken partial profits, then stopped out. So be it. Nice little pullback to the EMA. Nice little takeoff so far. So far, so good there. This is core methodology type of stuff. So that's what you want to focus on right now for the most part, given the conditions with the bear market. Now, I am free rolling on this one. This was an RS breakout. Just was going straight up. So I bought it. Some, some of the, one of these gurus on YouTube. Don't buy when they're going up. No, sometimes that's the best time to buy them. A XAVA, this is one that I'm free rolling on. It's also an add-on trade in here. Not really working too well on the add-on or the remaining shares for that matter. But nice little pullback to the EMA. Nice little uptrend. This thing can really trend nicely. Look at this beautiful setup back here and back here. I played both of these. I got stopped out here, and then I was right back in somewhere in here. If you watch recent webinars, you'll see where I talked about that in presentations. Okay, okay, another one free rolling on. So far, so good. Just kind of pulling back in here, a little bit of a flag pattern. I know it's a little nosebleed, but this does look sort of interesting. Now, here's the thing. You, there is going to be some FOMO if you're sitting on your hands. In fact, let's just take a look at, let's just go through these. Some of these S ones are, are these ones that with S on them are shorts. So if they look bullish to you, don't get too excited because they are shorts. But as you go through these, you'll see that a lot of these are well below their EMA, and there's nothing to do. There's Landry Lights above the highs, meaning that the highs are less than the EMA. And when that occurs, you just want to stay out of the way. So probably the, the biggest takeaway, as I've been saying lately with these little crypto videos I've been doing, is don't trade them if they're below the 30 EMA. And that's going to keep you out of a lot of trouble. As I've said, at nausea, I think it was Gayard that said bad things happen below the, I think it was a 280 moving average. In this case, bad things happen below the 30 EMA. This is one I actually was very tempted to short. But you could see Landry Light below, and so far, bad things have happened from 52 down to 38. It'll be fun to watch this one. I know you want to party with me to see how far it'll go. But there are a few above the 30, but most, for the most part, everything, or most everything, I should say, is below the 30 EMA. So this is why I think we're in a bear market, but things could change really quickly with crypto. I've never seen a market that could turn around so quickly. Also, one thing I was thinking about right as I was going live is, Remember that crypto trades 24 hours a day, so it trades about four times as much or three and a half times as much as stocks. So these things get to play out a lot more faster than they would in a regular market. This one looks kind of interesting, P-O-L. It looks like it can be a little thin based on the spikes, but you can see it's above. It's 30 EMA. You've got Landry Light. Let's see, bar one, bar two. An aggressive entry would have been right here on a 230 EMA. It's pulling back a little bit. Maybe keep an eye on this. Maybe look to play a breakout 
you had that one. And these very inefficient ones, kind of like IPOs when they first come out, you can play breakouts. Breakouts in stocks, as I preach, often fail, and it's, it's not a really great way to trade as a general statement. But inefficient markets that can make really big moves, such as crypto and IPOs, it can work well. So one thing I do want to say is don't let FOMO get to you right now. Pick your spots carefully. I am probably guilty. You see that I'm long quite a few of these right now. I, I'm probably guilty of a little bit of FOMO in here. I would say trading less is more. Just keep your powder dry for when things improve. Again, look, downtrend, 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 downtrend. <laughs> so you get the idea. So keep some powder dry for when these things start going back up again. And if you are going to trade during a bear market, as I have been guilty of doing lately, just make sure they're going up. Make sure they're well above the 30 EMA. Don't let FOMO get to you if you're patient. When these things go, it's fantastic. Like I've been saying quite a bit, I've caught a few. I was getting ready to say that looks good, but I've got that one. Thank goodness. When these things go, they can really go, and it's like they all go at once. And as I said quite a bit, I, I was hitting like five to seven initial profit targets a day, and now it's like if I get one a week, I'm pretty happy. So not a great time to be trading, but be patient. It improves quickly or it changes quickly, I should say, as I said earlier. Everybody have a great rest of the weekend. And if you have any questions, DaveLander.com slash contact. Thank you so much. And may the trend be with you.